All right, guys, so I'm going to do a before and after comparison from just completely stock setup to a better bar and chain on it. I'm going to go with the 325. I'm actually going to go with a 12-inch bar. This is a 14. And then uh, do, do comparisons with a full stock setup and then with a different bar. And then I'm going to go ported with this bar and then ported with the other setup. And let's see what happens. And, you know, I'm just not real, not all that happy with this saw. I think it's underpowered. It still needs some more break in time. But I bought this full chisel Woodland Pro non-safety chain. And it's the same story. It just, it's, it jumps around a lot. The chain speed's not all that great. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this and see what happens. <laughs> All right, so I just finished cutting that log. That was a somewhat fresh black walnut. And this is, like I said, a 14 inch. Now I accidentally bought a 12 inch bar. For some reason I thought this was already 12 and I was at work, so I just went ahead and ordered it. I think it'll be fine, but the comparison will be a little different, but that piece of wood was probably 12 inches on its own, maybe 11, I don't know. But it didn't. It cut okay. I mean, you saw when I got into the thickest part of the wood, it was chattering really good and... <laughs> So I just got done with the Woodland Pro chain on it. And like I said, it's it's chisel, non-safety, full sequence. Honestly, it cut a little worse. I think, uh, I think I'd have to file the tooth back a little bit to get the rakers higher to get that to cut smoother. Uh, I tried to keep it light on the pressure, but that was actually kind of worse. So even more to show that this, the chain speed is just not there. I'm over here at my dad's shop. That's where the welder and all the bigger, more expensive tools are at in space. But, um, you know, I thought I could grind this lip that was on here originally off and separate the three pieces. And you can kind of see that there is three sections but I've been hammering on it, prying on it. I don't want to grind too far to the point where I really can't weld it back together. And it, it's not coming apart. So I think I'm just going to cut this whole face off and just go that direction. Well, I made a discovery. So I was under the impression that there was a cat behind that part right there. And lo and behold, there's simply a baffle. Like a lot of others have done, I probably should have just drilled straight through, right here through this baffle, and that would have done it. So here's the two halves. You know, as you can see, there you can. There's two layers here, and I tried to push the one out, and didn't really want to come out, and I pried on it a bit, and I just decided the outer shell is so thin. I, it just didn't really care for how thin that was, so I just decided to drill a bunch of holes in the baffle, and well, as you can tell, it's really not going to do all that much now. 
and uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just throw a pipe right here. Wish I had something slightly smaller, but I don't. And you know, you know, this whole project is. I'm just gonna chalk it up to science. If I ruin this muffler, oh well, I'm gonna throw it away. I'm gonna buy another one. You know, if I screwed up the cylinder, it runs like shit. I'm gonna throw it away. I'm just gonna buy another one. And uh, the only thing that's gonna bother me about that is my patience. Because I want to get this back together and I want to run it. I want to see how it does. I don't really want to have to order something and, and then wait and then do some more work and then see how it goes after that. Well, I totally butchered this muffler, but it's going to be better in stock. That's guaranteed. The size, the opening's about two and a half times the size of stock, maybe three times. And uh, I like how everything turned out. Actually welded it together was no problem at all, except I got to this one corner, and no matter what I did, I just kept blowing metal away. So I had to crank my welder all the way down, which I was pretty close to there anyways. And well, I kind of built it up a little bit and it's fine, but it's gonna work, guaranteed. Uh-uh-uh-uh! <laughs> uh
So that pretty much completes this little video series or kind of tutorial on my adventures of porting this little guy. And I can tell you it's night and day difference in saw. I mean, before it was, it's fine for cutting small little limbs, but as soon as you get anything of decent size, it's just, there's not enough chain speed, not enough power, chatters like crazy. One thing I can say is, so the cut times with this bar, same long everything was 14 seconds. With the completely stock setup 14 inch bar, which this is 12, with the 14 was 13 seconds. The big difference was, is this was smoother. I could apply a lot more pressure and not have any issues. The other bar was a little more finicky, but I think if I use that Woodland Pro chain and I just file it right, keep the rakers kind of high, it'd probably be the best setup, quite honestly. So I, it is smoother, a little lighter, looks cool, which this is a obviously Forester 12 inch bar. It was not echo specific. It was like a multi mount. Uh, it bolts right up oils chain. I ended up going to steel and getting this uh, one fourth 050. It's a nice little carving chain. I like it. Cuts good, semi chisel. But I can say if you're thinking of buying this setup, which this was like a hundred and I think 20 bucks for the bar chain and sprocket, I'd probably just pay somebody to port it. I mean, I charge 240, which includes return shipping to port a saw. And with the stock setup, I thought I cut great once ported. So that's kind of up to you. I mean, I know there's guys too, just doing a muffler mod timing advance and going with this setup. I, I mean, that works pretty good, but it's not the same. Uh, you know, I got more compression. It's just all around better saw now. I actually like it quite a bit. Um, I would probably go with a 14 inch. Like I said before, I accidentally bought a 12. I think 14 is a better fit. And uh, the saw is not even broken in yet. It's only maybe at most two tanks of fuel through it. I bought it to do some limbing and uh, dug fur right next to my house. Did that, put it away. I hadn't used it since until now. So there you go. If you got any questions, you uh, want some work done, let me know. You know, I port saws every week here in Oregon. You know, I got my, my Logan 210 lathe, kind of dirty right now. I'm actually in the middle of cleaning my garage as we speak, but port and doing machine work. Uh, I don't really do just basic repairs unless it's in for port work. But uh, yeah, uh, thanks for watching and hopefully I covered everything. And I actually forgot one thing. Of course I forgot one thing. Um, I'm not sure yet if a timing advance really does anything. I've seen some other guys with their saws do a timing advance and a muffler mod, so hard to say. You know, there's very little information on porting these saws on the internet. Uh, there's some other guys who got some videos out there who say timing advance didn't do anything. Uh, I went ahead and ported it and timing advance at the same time. I did about a third of the key. So I'm actually going to try put it back to stock timing and see what happens. And uh, yeah, that was about it. I, I'll, you'll have to wait for a video for that to happen.